Um, I, I want to say, uh, sort of join everyone else in saying how much I appreciate being included um, I, I, and give you a, a fair warning that um, my, my work is as a practitioner on the ground, as a, a, a political strategist and a uh, sort of somebody who gets dirty all the time, every day. Um, and my field is largely early education. Uh, Smart Start is focused on children zero to five. And I, when I thought about what I wanted to say, I wanted it to serve three big, three big points. And uh, certainly, I'm looking forward to some questions and uh, opportunity for exchange. Um, the the first thing is that maybe we can offer uh, for some of you who are uh, great scientists uh, thinking uh, about implementing good programs, we can offer some example of what a state intermediary might look like. I think Audrey was giving you an example of what the federal intermediary looks like when they sort of try to move something through the, through the world, and, and we can give you some example of what that looks like. And then I, I think the other big point I want to leave you with has to do with multidimensional deci decision making. Um, and I was delighted that we have, um, we, uh, if from the very beginning this morning, have talked about uh, the idea that it is not ever going to be perfect. And uh, fidelity is a fascinating uh, goal for us to aspire to, um, but we live in a real world. And so the, the dimensional, the multi dimensions of our decision make, the way we made our decisions, I thought that might be of interest to some of you. And then the final thing I wanted to sort of put out there is the concept of risk. And being somebody who's on the ground working, uh, working, uh, constantly for, uh, on behalf of making things better, which is what we're all about, trying to improve the world for, for children and families and adults and folks who are in trouble, um, that we've got to take some risks. And so the, that balancing out of what those risks are with good knowledge and good background that certainly we, uh, many of you in this room, have offered to, the, to multiple fields as we think about the challenges in front of us, that's, the, that's I think, the hardest part of all. So I'm going to move pretty quickly, I think. Okay, let's see. We do this. No, that doesn't work. All right. Oh, it's oh, it did. All right. Um, one of the things that I think is interesting about Smart Start. Smart Start is, uh, you know, has been uh, around since 1993. It's a bit has really a uh, 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 early. Uh, inventor, if you will, um, an early innovator. And SmartSart itself is, in fact, an innovation. And, and some might actually call it, uh, might go so far as to say we have, we have some pretty significant evidence that we've changed the, the uh, conditions for young children in North Carolina and some of that. You, you, one might assume we actually are, in fact, not just an innovate, we are an innovation ourselves that is actually built to expand and grow additional innovations. So it's a multi-tiered sort of process. So we are an innovation. We have some, uh, some awesome results of what we've been able to do around early, uh, early childhood education, outcomes for kids in third grade around academic success, things around community building, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we've been, the state, um, the state process We've been in place since 1993, but the whole state was covered, um, has only been covered for 14 years, took us the first five years to pull it together. Now, inside the model of Smart Start, it is, uh, like I said, it's community-based. So each, we have these, this indicates the 77 local partnerships that run across the state. And most of you will you know that we are, you know, we're a state, we have different kinds of states, of communities in our state. We have extremely rural or remote areas. Certainly the tail ends of our state are such. And then we have some pretty big, um, pretty successful metropolitan areas that look very urban. Uh, to, to certainly to, to most Southerners. So we have a, we have very different, uh, a very different faces as you look across North Carolina. But what the beauty, one of the things that Smart Start did was to build local partnerships, which meant that there are, there are independent 501c3s who make decisions, they get funding and they make decisions for their community about the needs of their children zero to five. And the, and the funding has been significant over the years. We're not gonna talk about it today as the uh, House Appropriations Committee is cutting us, um, but um, it has been uh, to the tune of uh, up to $231 million um, in on annually for the last, not, not 
On average, it's about $200 million for the last 15 years. So locally driven. The structure itself is built. A lot of the things that were in the, uh, some of the uh, articles that we read are embedded inside the Smart Start model. Now, we recently, um, you know, we started before anybody used the words evidence-based, and but what we did was try to look for good innovations and ask communities to do assessments to try to figure out what was going to be the most successful. And as dollars became thinner and as we learned more, truly there was much more pressure put on, uh, on the local partnerships to uh, work in evidence-based programs. And our, like I said, the organizational factors lived there, so it made it easy for us to sort of jigger it. And one of the ways that we, we jigger our system is to put out, set aside a number of dollars, obviously not what the feds are setting aside, and asking the local partnerships to engage. So do you want to play, or do you think your community has a need? Come on and let's talk about um, an evidence-based program. So of course, because we do things like we do things in North Carolina. We, of course, did not just pick one evidence-based program. No, no. We had to put lots of them out there. Um, but it, it does, in fact, speak to the messiness of the reality of working in a, in a state that has different kinds of communities with different kinds of needs and, and actually sort of interests, if you will. So we put a bunch of stuff out on the street. Um, and, we, and we spent a long time trying to figure out what we were going to do, how we're going to pick the ones that we put forward. And we had a, I, I want to just sort of step aside. We did have a, a, a brief engagement, which we're still um, actively engaged in, with the Nurse Family Partnership, with some pu public partners and private partners, our bi some of our big state level foundations, as well as our public health and, and divisions um, of social services. And what we did for that project was we went out and did all the work that Karen defines in that readiness exploration process with because we knew the community, because we were on the ground deep in the community. The local boards of Smart Start local boards are required to have the health department, educators, uh, some policymaker, county commissioner, or mayor on the board. So when you build that table, you have this enormous power to be able to find out what's really going on with the community and to leverage or partners and money to make things actually work more efficiently. But the nurse family partnership didn't fit as a project that Smart Start could actually do. And so instead, we picked some others. We picked, um, and we went through this process, which, which actually comes up later in Philippe's conversation, looking at qu questions of uh, quality, of effectiveness, and then of the match. And I listed some ideas here about what the match meant for us. And certainly, they're interesting and, uh, and were very um, challenging questions as to how we could actually match, not just with our state level, but the local level and then an individual community level. And then I just ran through the four, the four projects that we put on the ground. Um, we put them everywhere. You can see they spread all across the state. We did um, childhood obesity. We did some developmental delay work with, with doctors. We did some pre-reading work, and then we did a, a very mild, light uh, intervention, incredible years for uh, families who self-selected. We were able, this is my, uh, this is the mess that we make all the time. Um, we were able in our process, we actually did make some very significant, we, we came back with results. We studied each, each one of the projects was evaluated across the state in the different counties and we got results. Now, they were meaningful out outcomes for kids and we clearly expanded the knowledge base around around evidence-based programs in, in the state. We build a scaffolding model that most days holds up, some days doesn't. We, we got additional funders, we got additional partners in the game, and we really did raise the issue, just the language, um, in a way, because it wasn't just policymakers talking about it, it was people on the ground who'd started to use the words enough that it became part and parcel of what we did. But it wasn't wasn't, uh, you know, wasn't easy. We weren't fully ready. We didn't discover Karen until after we were way in the mess. And then it was like one of those, you know, sort of like your freshman class in psychology when you go, wow, that's why I'm so messed up as a kid, right? Um, it's the same sort of thing. Um, but we did, but we did move, we moved the ball forward. We made a difference for kids, and we made a bunch of mistakes, but we engaged new and additional partners as we went forward. And now, of course, we're fa 
facing a totally different conversation around sustainability, which is happening in any state, in every state now, around trying to keep these projects funded as we move forward on behalf of, of uh, making the world a better place. So, thanks.